Okay, so the way we will start is first I'll do a short presentation. Um, can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go through this presentation fast because I think we've already talked about Clepsidra before. So I will just go through the uh, section fast and then we'll open the tutorial examples a little bit and do it slightly more interactive um, and see how it goes, okay? There is, uh, there is no formal structure to this workshop at the moment. So um, I'll introduce with the core API. Uh, what you need, as we've said before, is like you need Ubuntu 18 or newer, GCC 11, uh, 14 also works, I mean, uh, GCC 14, uh, C++ 14. Plus plus, uh, yeah. And for this workshop, I assume that you have already cloned Clepsidra SDK and you have cloned tutorial. So uh, that's how we'll start with. So Clepsidra SDK core, if you see the architecture, it's uh, it's this way, like you have the base layer of the core and then you, we have additional sections, which is the code generator. So you had the Python uh, code generator installation messages you had seen. So that's the code generator. Uh, you have middleware connectors, so which allows you to connect Lepsidra core to either ROS, DDS, 0MQ, uh, CAN, in fact, uh, also CSP, basically. Uh, and we also have some performance analysis tool, which is not a part of the community version, but we sell license for the performance analysis. And then we have additional language binding, so you can actually connect this to C or Node um type of code and then you connect this to your application the application that you're actually going to work uh, in this demonstration we are sticking to c plus plus so the language bindings don't come into play uh, generally when we have a clepsidra sdk distribution you have a developer station with the libraries and headers on which you develop and then the licenses are also given for each of your target computers. So you can have uh, SDK, uh, the SDK running on your uh, Linux computer, and then you cross compile it for your RTEMS distribution or FreeRTOS distribution and so on. So the license, I mean, this is just administrative stuff, but I'm just putting it out. It's not so relevant to the uh, workshop right now. Uh, just a quick update on the support we have, like which computers, ARM, x86, and we also have non-Linux um, OS supported, like RTEMS and FreeRTOS. And we are adding support more as we keep on working. Uh, so what is the core API? So the core API is basically we have a published subscribe model. For a publisher, we have two versions of the publish. One is a standard publish, which does a copy of your event. And there's a no copy version, which works with shared points, smart pointers. So there are no copies, so it's faster. That's the high and, performance uh, version. Uh, in fact, in the high performance version, we have two versions. One is the oh. normal one and the no copy one. So, okay. mm -hmm. uh, and then you have a subscriber uh, with which you can register listeners to take actions on the messages that you're receiving. And for these publisher and subscribers, you have something known as providers. So we have an event emitter, which is the base of the, of the system. It's generally used for testing. So it's, it's synchronous. So when you publish immediately, the subscriber is called and the action, whatever you have registered is taken. So you don't, when you run with the event emitter, the idea is that uh, you don't have to worry about the threads or, uh, uh, memory problems and so on. So it's very useful for testing your application. Event loop, which is the high performance version. Uh, it is used in the case where you have many publishers and one consumer. So a typical example is you have multiple sensors and you want to take action on the, the data you're receiving from all these sensors. And a data multiplexer is the opposite case, which is one publisher and multiple consumers. Mm -hmm. And based on all these ideas, we have a derived API. So you can have a scheduler to schedule a task and run it periodically. Uh, you can define a service, 
which uh, basically is um, like at each uh, whenever an event happens you can use it to execute some action or you can define some task which keeps running in the background so you do a startup uh, and then periodically you execute the action which has been defined and then you shut down and we also have something known as an environment which can be very useful for setting global properties so you can have an environment with uh, these four types of properties four five types of properties which can be shared in your application so you just share the environment and then when you say get this property you have that property for use in some other part of your application uh, I mean, in the tutorial, we don't talk about those derived APIs too much. We talk more about the core API because it's already such a heavy concept. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so like I said, there are two main ways of processing your data. One is that you have on the left is the data multiplexer, which is a single producer producing events. And then you're taking action on this event with different consumers. Uh, the other one is the high performance event loop. So you have multiple producers, which all publish to the same event loop and the consumer consumes those event. And since they're in the same event loop, you don't have to worry about thread contentions and so on. Uh, okay. so, yeah, just uh, the same information in a different, uh, different way, basically. Uh, in your application, you could have sensors connected to your application with the CAN bus, some other sensors connected directly, some sensors connected with ROS, and all will work with your application. You don't have to worry about managing all those things. Okay. So as the, the Clepsydra core uh, uses uh, the, some of the main ideas are that instead of using traditional multi-thread programming, we use stream style processing. So instead of having a lock, worrying about uh, doing a mutex lock and checking the state and processing, you, you just publish data to a stream, you take data from the stream and uh, you reduce all the context switches and that's what makes it faster. There are three main ideas in Clepsydra core. One is lock-free programming, uh, second is asynchronous programming and the third is dependency in injection. So with lock-free programming, uh, I guess, uh, I, I don't know if you have an idea, you want me to explain slightly more or not? Uh, yeah, a little bit more if possible, yes. Okay, so, so the traditional example, this figure which we have is that uh, in an airport, uh, you don't, the plane doesn't stop in the air when the, the runway is blocked. It just checks the status of the runway. If the runway is, is busy, it does a loop and comes back and checks again. So it's doing its own task. It just periodically checks the, the status of the runway and when it's ready, it lands. So it's the same idea. So you have an event loop running and periodically it checks the status of the data. If there is new data, it takes an action. So everything is running in one thread, but in, in the event loop, everything is running in the single thread and it just keeps checking the status of the event. So, so because you don't have context switches, things run much faster. You don't have mm -hmm. to load data in and out and so on. And then the publish subscribe model is asynchronous. Uh, is asynchronous. I'll, sh I'll talk about this in the next slide. And then the third idea is dependency in the injection, which also I will talk after this. So uh, basically what we have is that look, suppose you want to print hello world, a classic example. So you define a callback function, which will process uh, string data, which is what you have. And then in your main application, you define the publisher and the subscriber on the first two lines. You register the action which you want to take, which is the callback. And when you publish hello world, the, the event loop will call the listener, which is the callback and publish this data. So you, you only worry right now about publishing the data and when the provider picks up that data and it receives the data, it will print this to the, to, to the screen, to the console. So that's the first part. 
Uh, second is dependency injection, which is basically, like I said in the first part, uh, in the, one of the first few slides, we have an event emitter and we have an event loop and we have a data multiplexer. All of those three can give you a type, a different type of a publisher and a subscriber. What happens is that all three, when they give you a publisher and subscriber, you could use them in this in the same format. Basically, you take the subscriber, register the callback, the same callback, and you publish it. So what you're doing is that on the fly, let's say you had uh, whatever the rest of your application which, which needs a publisher, you can easily switch from one type of publisher to the other. Mm -hmm. So in the testing mode, you have the event emitter uh, publisher. And then when you want to really run your application, you switch to the event loop publisher. And then you have the high performance without changing the rest of your code. Mm -hmm. So that's what dependency injection is. So uh, I'll talk quickly about the advanced features, uh, which is that we have a code generator tool. Uh, it is YAML based. So essentially you can define your data object which you want to publish as a YAML file, a YAML structure and the code generator will uh, develop C++ classes which can be used. Uh, there is a middleware connector API for ROS, DDS, Serial, MQ and they also provide a Clepsidra publisher and subscriber. So in fact, if you have an application which uses the publisher and subscriber, you can easily use it with ROS, DDS, 0MQ, CSP, and so on. We also have a performance analysis tool. Uh, with this, you can do real-time analysis using REST uh, API or with sockets, or you can also do offline analysis using by storing all the logs in, in a file. And one way we do this analysis using the OpenMCT tool developed by NASA. So you get like this very nice charts with real-time performance, like what is the publishing rate, what is the CPU usage, and so on. So this is a part, this is not part of our community version, it's part of our licensed version. Uh, but I'm just showing you how it uh, works. Uh, the middleware API, uh, so, you do you you define if you want it for ROS or TDS, and it will create mappers. So your classes which you define, uh, let's say you want to publish point cloud data, you define a YAML structure defining the point cloud data, and the mapper will map it from a C style struct to a ROS capable uh, message or a DDS type message, and so on. The mapping is done automatically, and so on. Uh, the code generator uh, will do this uh, generation of the C++ code. It helps, uh, you, it also gives you helpers so that you can serialize this data to JSON or binary format. And it also has the mappers to the middleware. So essentially, if you have uh, a YAML structure uh, on the left defined like this, the code generator will define a structure on the right, which is like a float double and so on. You can also have std string, you can have pointers, you can have smart pointers, you can have vectors and so on. It's, uh, it's quite uh, quite good. And you can also have, let's say you define a, cl uh, uh, um, uh, a class called, let's say point, which has X, Y, Z position. And then you define a second point, uh, class called, let's say point cloud, which is a collection of points. You can also do that. So you can use one, user-defined object inside the other, and so on. I mean, this is a little bit advanced. Uh, you won't see this. Uh, it's used slightly in the tutorial, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's when you play with it more, you'll see this more. And just an example of like Epsidra SDK for user, uh, like intensive algorithm. The idea is that instead of parallelization, you're doing pipelining. So what that means is that let's say a classic example of matrix multiplication. You have a series of matrix multiplication 
uh, let's say A multiplied by itself gives you B, B multiplies by itself gives you C and so on. The classic approach is to parallelize the matrix multiplication at each stage. So use the full CPU to parallelize the operation, get B as fast as possible and do the same calculation with B and so on. What Clipsidra does is that it, see, uh, it uh, pipelines this. Uh, so you do, whenever A multiplied by itself gives you B, you send it to the event loop. The event loop takes the action and does the next calculation. And these are separated into threads and each thread can individually be parallelized if you want. So you can control, uh, basically we call this like a 2D uh, threading model because you can control, let's say you can control that a thread one is parallelized to do vector uh, matrix multiplication in using all the CPU cores and thread two is not, you, you can control it this way. But this is a part of the advanced API, uh, just introducing the concept, but we won't talk about it much uh, in you know, when we are looking at the code or so on. And do you have specific libraries for uh, the optimization of the processor, for example, for the ARM uh, to use the mul multiple uh, input commands, like to, uh, to treat the vector multiplication, for example? I mean, this is handled at yeah, the lower level. So yeah, it, it, uh, with the optimization, yeah, it does generally uh, do it. Uh, yeah, they compile depending it. on our application, sometimes we have to look into it deeper mm -hmm. and then optimize it. But in general, yeah, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, uh, we have we had we've done some benchmarks where we did this step, which is that uh, this test, which is uh, we had a series of matrix multiplications. The result of one matrix multiplication was fed to the next step, and so on. So so. And we did this on multiple computers. Uh, so here, for example, uh, when we say 10 steps, which is basically A multiplied by itself is step one, which gives you B, and then B multiplied by itself gives you C, and so on, you do this 10 times. And when you do with OpenMP, uh, publishing rate is defined as the rate at which the new A is generated, the input. Mm. So as you increase the publishing rate, the CPU usage with OpenMP quickly hits, hits the limit because it's using all the cores to process the matrix multiplication. And whereas with Clepsidra, it's, it's a linear increase. And the throughput is the rate at which you get the output, basically. So with, with uh, at smaller steps, you don't see so much difference with the throughput. Uh, and you see that latency is slightly higher with uh, Clepsidra, but you can, there are ways to optimize this also. Uh, where you see really the performance shine is when you start increasing the, the, the number of steps. And you see that the throughput, uh, Clepsidra becomes better at handling higher throughput while keeping the CPU, uh, let's say, reasonable, linear. Mm -hmm. Whereas with OpenMP, you quickly hit the limits and then you cannot process any more data. So yeah, so that's basically the introduction of Clepsidra and quickly talking about the basic features and so on. Uh, and if you if you want to like, yeah, I, I'll leave Pablo's information, contact information, if you want to get in touch with him later, but we can now start looking at the, the code examples and so on. Uh, I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to start with uh, the tutorial examples yourself or you prefer that I open the tutorial examples and talk through what is happening? Um, yes, I, I just have some questions. Sure. Um, so I already answered to some questions that I had. Uh, hmm. So in the list that I saw at the beginning, Clepsidra uh, supports some ARM processor, but I didn't saw the ARM processor that we will use in the uh, 
um, Adrios project. Uh, which one is it? Uh, it's in the others. It's a fifty three also. Huh? Uh, it is supported. I think we we need to update this. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Yeah. And so, yeah, one of the, the the function of your library is this communication. And do you support the communication between the uh, FPGA part of the Xilinx uh, uh, system on chip and the the processor? So we have a team working on that right now. Mm -hmm. So as we have more info, I'll keep you updated on that on, on the performance characteristics and so on. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. Yeah. So I, I think one of the first implementation that I should do is a conversion of a raw image to a point cloud image, pretty image. Exactly. Yeah. So we okay. can think to have a look on the today on the example from this point of view. Okay. So, if it makes sense for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I will do is uh, I'll stop sharing the presentation and switch to the examples. Let's say. Uh, I don't know if you can see like a uh, yes. Uh, can you see it? Okay. So let's say I mean this is a pretty. This is a example one of the tutorial. Uh, mm hmm. Um, let's say here now your publisher could be um, instead of like a std string in your case, which is a raw data basically. So you could have it as a std string or std vector of floats. Yeah. So the idea is that you define it in terms of this raw publisher. Okay. And then you 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 see that we have defined this uh, on the left. Uh, this list now which takes action on your on your uh, data, uh, which is what we uh, yeah. So so this action it it doesn't depend on whether you have an event emitter or an event loop or a data multiplexer. So for testing your application, uh, you define it in terms of the raw publisher and the subscriber. You write your code, um, making sure your calculations are done correctly. What do, do you mean by correctly? Uh, basically, um, you are separating out the problem. You don't worry about the performance. You write the the you write your uh, function the way. With your unit tests, with your uh, input data and expected output data, uh, you write that without worrying about Clef Citra. Basically, the okay. only thing is that, it, for example, the publisher here, example, it, it takes a publisher pointer, but the important thing is the string, right? And the listener on the left here, uh, the it, it it doesn't need to know about the subscriber here. What it needs is the string, and what its expected output is that it brings the message to the to the screen. So, when you write this function, you don't care whether there is Clepsidra running or not. Mm -hmm. So, you do the similar thing with your uh, raw data conversion to point cloud, mm -hmm. uh, which is that. Um, let's say your simple publisher is your sensor. Uh, which is taking data, which is which has uh, let's say 
the libraries for your driver and so on. So it's taking data from the memory buffers and it's converting to floating point data or whatever. And then it just publishes that data. Your next step is taking this raw set of floating point data and converting it into a point cloud, which is a series of X, Y, Z points. Again, this, this step, this conversion from floating point data to point cloud doesn't need to know about clips either. So what you do is that your uh, driver has a publisher of floating point vectors. Then your converter has a, a subscriber of floating point vectors. And does the conversion to point cloud and the output uh, is publishing data. I don't know, it's uh, so if you see the example, yeah. Um, in the tutorial, you can have a look at example three, I think. I yeah, because it takes a vector of, vector of data. Okay. Exactly. So, uh, what you see what you have is that uh, okay so here vector publisher what it is doing is generating random let's say pseudo random uh, data the vector it is just publishing it. And then you have the sum vector data, which is calculating the sum. And using this publisher to publish the result. So, uh, so here is the class I've defined which does the transformation of vector to the result. Mm -hmm. And it only needs the publisher and the subscriber, one subscriber to receive the vector of floats and one publisher to print out the result. Mm -hmm. This here, what I'm defining is what to do with the output that you receive. I didn't understand the last uh, part that this you part. said about okay. the event loop. Event loop. Ah, okay. So here, okay, let's say I do this. What will happen is when I publish this data, when I publish a new vector, mm -hmm. it will be received by the sum vector data on the subscriber, mm -hmm. which will calculate the sum. Yes. And publish this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now what I can do here is that, let's say I can, I, uh, I can define a new function here, which is um, x const and I can either do uh, STDC out this this one I can do void I don't know 
and process some And do some some uh, do something I don't know uh, or let's say uh, floor oh. what I can do here is I can take so what is not what it is now doing is that whatever is being published here as a sum is re being received by this subscriber. I can do register listener. Okay. Sum. I can also do like this. So the third option, what I can do is that I can have, uh, I can connect another class to this instead, which takes the sum and does something else and then publishes it also. Mm -hmm. What happens in each case is like, like I said, this one doesn't know anything about Clepsydra. These in the, 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 the functions inside, they don't know anything about Clepsydra. They do their calculations and they just publish the result. Mm -hmm. What you do with the result is, is, uh, is up to you. Yeah. If you, so, so this is, uh, yeah. And then the next step let's say is that well this is this is already this example is already using the event loop but to start with you could use the event emitter so you don't have to worry about multiple threads and so on it's the testing uh, case and this part of your code does not change whether you are using the event emitter the data multiplexer or whatever So let's see. Okay. I I think we have another example where we do. Example five in the tutorial, which is always the same thing. We are publishing a vector of floats, and then we we do two two operations with it, which is basically we get the sum and we also do a modulo. So get the the, the uh, let's say norm uh, of the of the vector. And as you can see that here, we are using the same class, some vector data, which was defined here. But now we are using data multiplexer instead of event loop. Mm -hmm. So this is what is called as dependency injection. You are switching from one behavior to another. But uh, the idea is this, that uh, you define your class to to accept a pointer to the subscriber of the in, of the input and a publisher of the output, and then you register a listener which does the processing. Mm -hmm. Very 
uh, where do you register? You say that you register uh, the part that the processing. Yeah, yeah. Is this one okay? Yeah, you could do it in multiple ways. You could also have, let's say, uh, what's this data? And you do, let's say, let's say. Instead of, I mean, if you don't want to do lambda functions, you could do it this way. And then you do. FTP bind. Um, something but it's essentially this basically you are passing the pointer to this this function by doing the register and then of course in the destructor you do subscriber uh, remove listener okay so what you could do is that instead of using lambda functions of this type you could have this this function. Uh, what you're doing is that you're converting the internal uh, internal uh, class member uh, as a std function. So you need to bind uh, use std bind and uh, this placeholder. What placeholder does is that it tells um, the compiler that in fact. Uh, this argument is a variable. So, so if you had a process data, let's say with with um, const load uh, um, let's say this was your function. And you do load uh, sum equal to something, and then and then you had uh, output equal to sum divided by scaling factor. Here, what you would do is that you would say um, say dot So now what is happening what is happening is that the register listener function is still getting a function which has only one variable, one input parameter in this type. But the process data which needs two arguments, it's getting one which is the std placeholder, which is the, the argument coming from outside, let's say the variable, and the scaling factor, which is here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can pass some uh, parameters yeah. to the function. Yeah, so. multiple parameters as well. I mean, you could do this in multiple ways. Right now, I've defined this as a member of the class, but you could you could have, let's say, a complicated uh, thing, uh, multiple inputs and so on. You could, well, right now, this is a std vector, but instead, if you're publishing a class, you could also, instead of a std vector of a float, you're publishing 
point cloud data, then all the information is already inside there. Hmm. Are there some limits on the memory? So I, can I publish the full uh, point cloud image or should I output pixel by pixel, for example? Uh, well, you'll have to benchmark it depending on how much memory is using. Uh, what you could do is uh, you could publish with the pointers, shared pointers. So uh, it depends on the, the hardware that you have and the memory that the restrictions that you have. You, you, if your point cloud is obviously too big, you, you will run into limits yourself. Yeah, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, uh yeah in the tutorial we also talk about uh we also talk about the memory pool there's a smart memory pool in the initial examples the memory pool is defined to be zero so you're actually allocating memory each time you publish but you could could have a memory pool of 10 objects let's say std vector of 10 so uh sorry you have Allocate memory for 10 STD vectors. And then you will always use the this pool to, to send and receive data. I think I, I need also to spend some time to define a, a test so create some uh, data yeah. to pass my system, if I understand correctly the, the, yeah, the logic. I mean, uh, you can use the, the examples in the tutorial. There is mm -hmm. also unit tests in the tutorial. So you can also have a look at those things. And yeah, you can uh, experiment with those things, yeah. We have also added like, well, we are, we're about to add it to the main branch, but there is a, a chapter on the state machine also. Yes, will you do a manual also for that? Yeah, the manual is is ready. It needs to be merged to the. I mean, it will be chapter four of this tutorial, basically. So there is a pull request we which we have worked on. It's it's today or tomorrow it will be updated. So if you do okay. later, we get pull uh, to the KPSR tutorial. You will have the chapter four with like five or six examples. Yeah, I saw that you put some code uh, on the Git, but I didn't found the the manual. Ah, okay, because it was a um, uh, chapter 4.md, it was a file. <laughs> ah, in the, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. skip that. You have question? Question? I saw I had a look of the MQTT uh, system, and there they have a hertz bit signal. So, the, the 
yeah. central system can check that everyone is still there. Do you have a logic like this one? Uh, no, we don't. We don't have a heartbeat thing. Mm -hmm. No. But, hey. Amend the old. Sorry? Depending on the case, it could be easy to implement. Like, you can have a function like using the, the subscriber and the publisher. You can, like, just add someone a periodic task. Mm -hmm. a, 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 you code the periodic task to every, I don't know, 100 milliseconds or something, just ping the different systems. And then you collect the, the result, and then you they go. You have a event loop collecting the responses, and then once the all the systems are corrected, you go like, yeah, everything's fine, everything's not fine. Uh, it's not uh, it's not natively, but I don't think it would be too hard to implement. By I mean, the CPU usage depends on your listener function, how heavy your listener function is. So if you have a very lightweight listener function, which is just, let's say you're publishing a Boolean, true or false or something like that or or a, or an integer let's say and your listener function is just checking that the integer has received or it has increased or something like, like a very small logic then you're not adding any overhead like not much overhead yeah i don't need it but i was just wondering if in the future, we need to debug the system and we have a like on the link between the FPGA and the processors. We want yeah. to see if it's constant. This could I be mean, a, an idea. We, we actually, we don't have, at the moment, we don't have a middleware connecting to MQTT, but it could be possible depending on, like you use Clepsydra on top of MQTT. So you, you send from mm. Clepsydra to MQTT and so on. So, so then you have the advantages of MQTT with the performance advantages of etc. That could be looked into. But, but, but I don't need it. The, yeah. the, I was looking for system that's what like the CURPSIDA to yeah. better understand your logic, and I yeah. I found this MQTT. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is a, there is a subscription uh, like the publisher class and the subscriber class have so this is your publisher class which is in the SDK and it has publication statistics available and uh, on this project, uh, can we have that? Can we have then the full uh, license or how it works? To... Um, I think uh, we sh you should raise this issue in the meetings. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I, I think there are already some talks going on about it. So. <laughs> yeah, I discuss with my project leader, and we will. Uh... In yeah. this topic on the mm -hmm. I mean I think some conversations have already happened between Pablo and the others. So but he, he clarify once you clarify with him, we'll give you the license and so on. Yeah. 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 But yeah, like um, you the subscriber class also has subscription statistics. It's it's a method already there. Yeah, that will be useful in a yeah. Next part of the, this development. So, like for example, you have uh, NQ time, discarded events, just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like when you program in Python, for example, you can also make statistic of your code. And yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Quite useful. Exactly. Perfect. So, I think for now, I have quite a lot to to yeah. test then to implement. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for this explanation, this workshop. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, write to us. Uh, keep the support at Clepsydra in copy, and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, one of us will reply. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. If you uh, later can send us the recording, it would be great. Yeah, yeah I will check that. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.